Hi, I'm Katie. And I'm Steven with pdq.com, and we're going to show you how to promote a domain controller. Woo. So, we are going to show you how to do everything through the server manager using the GUI. These are all wonderful things that you can do during, using PowerShell, mm -hmm. which if you feel like a learning challenge, go fight win. Learn right. PowerShell. But so. to keep it easy and keep it simple, we're going to do it through the manager. Yep. Bunch of next buttons. Go ahead. So, uh, we have set on this domain controller a static IP address, which for your domain, your DNS, and your DHCP, they will be significantly more pleased with life if your domain controller has a static IP address. Yeah, you don't want a chicken or the egg problem if you're doing DHCP with the dynamic IP address. Definitely don't. So, just a note before you start, set your uh, static IP. So, uh, this is the server manager. You've probably seen it pop up on, you know, stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. We're going to go over to manage and add a role and feature. So first, we're going to start with the Active Directory roles and everything that it wants. So next. By the way, this is just like a clean Server 2016 install. We're just starting from scratch here. Yep. Named it, gave it an IP address. And that's where we're at. Yep. Nothing terribly interesting. So here you see we found the machine. We're going to be working on ourselves. This machine's called Crown. We're going to go to town on it. Next. And we're going to grab the Active Directory domain services. And then you'll notice that it lists here all of its uh, dependencies. So it's going to include those. And the management tools. Yep. A lot of what we're doing is going to be just the defaults. Yep. Pretty easy. We're just going to let Windows do what Windows does. Mm -hmm. Advertisement for Azure Active Directory. Excellent. Nice. Fun. <laughs> so uh, this is a summary of what we're going to do. Just to make sure that you got everything. If you had made any other changes, you know, you'll see this window as you start to add roles and features. And now we're going to install. Great. So now it's finished. Yeah. Now we're done. We're back. All right. So uh, we've installed the Active Directory domain services role. Close. And you'll notice up here in the server manager, we have a notification. It's time to promote this server to a domain controller. So the feature's been installed, and off we go. So we are starting fresh with a brand new server. There's no domain here. Mm -hmm. This is the first domain controller. Obviously, if you're promoting a domain controller to an existing domain, you're adding one, replacing one, mm -hmm. doing whatever you need to do. You'll want to add a new domain to an existing forest or an existing domain, depending on what you have. We have neither a forest or domain, so yep. So this just is adding new. it to a new forest. And we get to pick the root domain name, which come with some important choices. And we encourage you to look around on TechNet mm -hmm. to brush up on the best practices for creating your very first domain. Yeah, Microsoft has been a little bit inconsistent on the best practices. Some of them. I mean, they, they change with, you know, yeah. every up they, release. They used to say your domain.local. Um, definitely don't do just your domain because that can cause problems uh, for routing to your website. Um, best practice is to do a subdomain, yep. such as AD. And to use something that, you know, does exist. So. Mm -hmm. So we, we are going to use whiskeytime.club. That's the domain that we're using yep. with the subdomain AD. So just hit the next button and pick our domain options. So uh, this server is going to be a DNS server and a global catalog server. It also asks about the functional levels. Um, since this is a brand new server, uh, brand new domain, we're just going to stay with the top, the 2016 level. Yep. And then uh, you've got your directory services restore mode password. Take note of what you do. Pick a nice, long, giant, randomly generated password. Yeah. Chuck it in your password manager and don't lose it. Because mm -hmm. you lose that, you're, you're sunk if you ever need it. But we're just going to do Hunter 2. As all good passwords are. Mm -hmm. Don't follow our example. This is just for our, our test environment. All right. We're going to go past that. Complaining about ENS, but we're going to add that after. Yep. It doesn't exist yet, but mm -hmm. it's okay. It's going to exist in a moment. And we wait. So we're going to add a NetBIOS name here. Um, by default, it's going to choose the subdomain AD, but really we want it just to be whiskey time. And there's our NetBIOS domain name. There. And so these wonderful settings, you do not want to change. Please leave them the default. Yeah. Just, you know, let them sit, let them bake. If you're tempted to put those on another, drive, like a D drive or an extra drive, don't. Let them live on C. Let yep. them live where they want to live. Let them stay as Windows has chosen. Expand the volume if you need more space, but yep. uh, you'll save yourself a headache if you just leave So many there. headaches. Yeah. 
All right, and then we're at the review. So this is going to tell you what we've done so far. And, you know, run through, make sure that everything looks like it did when you were on the other page. Yeah, one cool thing is you can click on View Script. We mentioned earlier that you can do everything through PowerShell. So at this point, if you view the script, if, and that's, that's all that's going to happen in the background. It's yep. all this in PowerShell. So. If you want to do the exact same thing later for another domain controller, you can save the script and just run it all at once. Yep, it's a great thing if you are interested in learning PowerShell. You can always look in under the hood and see what the server manager is up to mm -hmm. in the background and learn new things. So there we go. We're going to run through the prerequisites check um, as it thinks and thinks for a moment. So if there's any error messages or anything that's going to stand in your way, it'll show up on this screen. Uh, there will be a couple informational mm -hmm. items of business. So it's going to complain about a few things. It's going to complaining about DNS again, which is okay. We're about to set that up, um, but just some warnings, so we're good to go. All right, and now we're going to, going to install. Do all Got the sacks. Wham, 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 wham. All right, and here we go. Uh, our domain controller is going to reboot. Windows is going to auto shut it down, and when it comes back up, it will be a domain ready controller. To go. Okay, we're in. And back. Thank you for waiting. That was Yeah, fun it took, to wait. took a while to reboot, but we're back up to the login, login screen. And now our administrator, which was a local administrator, is now the domain administrator. Same password, like it said in that little review, if you noticed at the bottom. Uh, let's hope I can type this right. Hey, nice. I typed it right. So uh, we're, we're logging in. in. All right. So you'll notice once the server manager finishes loading, uh, you'll see our new roles. We've got ADDS, DNS is ready to be configured, everything yeah. that comes along with the domain controller. We're here. So follow along in the next couple of videos where we set up DNS and DHCP. Thanks for watching. Now you know everything about domain controllers. Um, we'll see you next time. I'm Katie. And I'm Steven. From PDQ.com. See ya.